my Good morning. Let's give the Lord some praise, amen. Hallelujah. God, we love you. We worship you, God. We honor and adore you, Lord. We really love you. Amen.
Lord, for this love that we have for you, this appreciation that we have for you, this adoration that we have for you. We offer to you this prayer, this worship. So God, today is just like all other days. It's up to you.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's what I came to do. I know that's what you came to do, to magnify his name. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, we do, Lord. Yes, we do, Lord. Yes, we do, Lord. That's what we come to do. We come to magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Give him the glory. Give him praise. Magnify his name. He is on his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's worthy. 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 Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Jesus, yes, Lord. Victor Moore and family. Annie Ford, Bernice Williams, Mildred Jackson and family, and the Bernardo family. God, we know you're able. Yes, Lord. Lydia Strong, Bonnie DeBar, DeBar, Andre Takari. I'm going to add my brother Reginald Evans to the list. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your spirit just continuing to reign in this church. Lord, we just thank you for your presence always being in this church. Lord, we just thank you that we love you and we adore you and we will continue to lift up your name. We will continue to worship you. We continue to thank you for every door that you have opened for us on this past week. Every door you done closed during this past week. Every situation that you done protect us on. The highways, the byways in the air, on the road at home. Every time you protect us, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you right now, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for getting us here safely. We thank you here, Lord Jesus, for you are the King of kings. And the Lord of lords, and Lord, we just thank you. Lord, you continue to bless us from day to day, from day to day, from day to day, from day to day. The day to day, and all we can do is just thank you, Lord. Father God, I love you. We love you as a whole entire church, Lord. Father, I pray that you bless Mount Olive like never before. Father, I pray that you rain down us like never before. Lord, I pray that souls be saved in this place like never before. People lives be changed like never before, Lord. God, I pray your presence in their life. I pray your presence in their life. I pray that you 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 move money every day in their life and continue to carry them lord hallelujah father we're on the prayer list and the name that was called off lord we know that you continue to work miracles i have seen miracles that you have done i have seen healing that you done done i have seen blessings that you have done i have seen people's lives been changed because of you god when they come in contact with you everything will be all right so father so i know you care for them so i'm casting all their cares upon you put them in your midst of your hands lord and i know that everything will be all right and father god continue to bless our pastor a wonderful man of god a wonderful man of god anointed man of god who you call to this flock lord i pray that you continue to bless him continue to lead him 
continue to leave his wife, continue to lead his children, continue to lead his grandchildren, continue to lead them each and every day. That no weapon form against them should prosper. Let nobody say against them should prosper. Nothing against them should prosper. They will continue to stand as you have called them to stand. Lord, this is a wonderful church. But you are blessed to be that way. Continue to bless our music ministry, Lord. Continue to use them in a mighty way. Continue to give them the songs to sing. Continue, continue to bless them and each and every person in here today. And let everyone know that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. That they can stand on your word and know that they are more than conquerors. And know that they can do all things through you that strengthens them. And they can walk by faith and not by sight. Understand it's all in your hands, God. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, Mount Olive. The following are your weekly announcements. On call this week, Beta Flock, Alaskia and Shirley Bradley, Valerie Tony, Marcellus Whitson. The 2021 contribution statements are available. Please call the church office to sign up to have your statement mailed. The 2022 tithe and offering envelopes are also available. You may pick them up by calling ahead during regular office hours. As we continue in-person worship service into the new year, we still ask that you RSVP each week. We are attempting to minimize unregistered walk-ins. If you are unable to register on the church website, please call the church office for assistance during regular hours, Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. Help us to plan ahead to make your worship experience a safe environment for all. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Mount Olive continues to partner with the Saginaw County Health Department for vaccination and booster shot clinics. The February clinic will be held on Wednesday, February 23rd from 3 to 6 p.m. The Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson boosters are being offered. Vaccination is for ages 12 and up. The clinic will be held in the J.P. Wilson Fellowship Hall. Please bring your photo ID and vaccination card. CDC guidelines will be followed. Mount Olive is partnering with Life Clinic for their baby bottle fundraiser. There are large baby bottles in the front vestibule for us to make coin and or cash donations. Donations may also be made at lifeclinic.org. The donated money will go toward providing free and confidential medical services, parenting educational classes, and trauma support for anyone in the Great Lakes Bay region. Donations will be accepted until Sunday, February 13th. Restoration Center Outreach is asking for donations of shampoo, mouthwash, razors, soap, lotion, deodorant, aftershave, and combs. Please drop donations off at RCO. The deadline to apply for the 2022 Saginaw County Foundation Scholarships is February 15th. This is a reminder to high school seniors and older students that you can apply for these four Macmillan scholarships. Cosmetology, medical, military, and musical. If you mention a connection with Mount Olive as part of the essay, you will automatically receive 10 points in the scoring process. Contact any Macmillan family member or call the Saginaw Community Foundation at 989-755-0545 if you have questions. This is the 20th year that the Macmillan Scholarships have been offered. To God be the glory. 
The SVBDA Congress of Christian Education is having part two of the workshop, Reimagining Christian Education Beyond COVID-19, Matthew 9, 35 through 38, Acts 1 and 8, on Saturday, February 12th, beginning at 9.30 a.m. There will be classes for all ages. The women's class will be led by Dean Teresa Doyle. Our own Sister Betty Cheney will lead the children and youth. Pastor Marcel will be leading the layman's class. Pastor Chavez Marshall will bring the new message. More information about taking part in this workshop will be announced soon. Great Lakes Bay Health Center has new COVID-19 vaccination and testing hours. Both are drive through and located in the David Gomez parking lot, 501 Lapeer, on Mondays through Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please bring your ID and insurance card. All are welcome. COVID-19 vaccinations can also be reserved with the Saginaw County Health Department at saginawpublichealth.org, the VA Hospital for Veterans, and all local pharmacies for anyone age 5 and above. Thank you, Mount Olive, from the family of Georgia Lee Hemphill for our prayer, support, and all accident. He earned a 3.7 GPA for the second semester. Awesome job, Jaden. Need announcement updates, employment opportunity information, reminders, and or church calendar, visit our website at mtoimbc.org. Happy birthday and anniversary. Trina King, Lamitria Smith, Grace Jackson, Lindsay Pollard, Nyambi Osteen, Deaconess Shirley Murray, Deaconess Denise Smith, Tanara Williams, Anastasia Cameron, Shaka McMillan, Reverend Corey Hamilton, Latoya Young, Stacy Bivens, Tracy Bivens, Deacon Vaughn Nickelberry, Vera Austin, Nikel Carter, Constance Lewis, Javon Clark, Kingston Osteen, and happy anniversary, Deacon George and Deaconess Dorothy Williams, celebrating 48 years. It's good to see you. Happy birthday to all the names that were called. <laughs> Never gets old hearing Sister Nick cheer for Brother Nick, does it? And happy wedding anniversary to the Williams. They smiling too. I'm going to leave that alone. I want to say congratulations to all of these accomplishments we've heard over the last few weeks reminded how faithful God is and how blessed we are as a congregation to hear all of these students and teachers and other members with all of these wonderful accomplishments we want to say congratulations we love you and we supporting you keep up the good work the title of pastor sermon this morning is stay connected it comes from Psalm 15. I'd ask that you open your Bibles there or scroll to it on your phone or tablet and leave your Bibles open and your screen on to follow along as he shares with us what the Lord has shared with him this week. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version of God's Holy Word again. Psalm 15 is our scripture for today. Here is what has been left on record for you and for me. He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things 
shall never be moved. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we're grateful for his holy word.
according to home guides, gardens, and gardening, flowers are the most evolved reproductive system the world has ever known. Flowers, as you already are aware of, have both male and female reproductive organs. And though they do have male and female reproductive organs, the flower is not a plant. It's a part of the plant. And so whenever that flower is separated from the plant, it begins to die. A flower does not have a life in and of itself. It needs to be attached to something else. So the next time you pick flowers, understand that the moment you detach that flower from the tree or the vine, death begins to take place. It may not appear as though death is taking place, but the moment you break that flower from the fellowship of the vine, it begins to die. Now that death can be red, pink, yellow, or white. But as long as you know, whenever you give someone a flower, you have just handed them death. Just wait a little while, and you will see petals will begin to fall from the flower. The color will change, and the flower will age. That is because you have broken the fellowship of the flower with the vine. And whenever that is done, death is imminent. But am I telling you something you don't already know? And that is not only is this the case in a botanical sense, it is also for certain in a relational sense. Whenever there is a disconnection between two people, whether it be mental, emotional, spiritual, or what have you, death is imminent. But please understand the type of death. I'm not talking about the death of the relationship. I'm talking about death of the fellowship in the relationship. The Bible, any number of times, hammers this particular point home. I am the true vine, Jesus said. You are the branches. But apart from me, you can do nothing. And we hear the same word in Psalm 15. Psalm 15 has been labeled as a kind of entrance liturgy where the worshiper raises a question about who can come in and then it answers the question beginning with lines two and concluding at the B clause of verse Remember, it is the desire of every child of God to be with God. And that's why that song takes us out every time we hear it. We just want to be, just want to be with him. And this particular psalm, it lays out bear right before us as to 
what type of person are sure that there is nothing or no one who is separating us from the fellowship of God? If you and I are not careful, what we love can separate us from God. Deeper than that, who we love can't even separate us from God. And so the psalmist lays out for us, raises the question, who can be in your presence? That is this oneness, that is this communion, this fellowship, this connection. Who? And then it goes down the list and he says, people who do this. Who shall abide? Or who shall dwell in your tent? Do you see the picture? Tents are small. There's not a whole lot of space, a whole lot of room. And, and everybody can't be in your tent. And God does not allow everyone in his tent. Get the imagery here. Who shall abide? Who shall dwell in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy? Holy means to belong to. It is to be a part of. It speaks of possession. It speaks of ownership. Who shall dwell on your holy hill? And now we have a list of characteristics of individuals who have made up their mind they're going to do everything they can to break down, tear down, bust through any barrier that would prohibit them from being in fellowship with God. Now please understand, if you are saved, you'll never lose your salvation. Your relationship is intact, but this text is talking about the fellowship of that relationship. Let me, let me pull up because I'm getting excited because I know what I'm getting ready to say. Let me, let me, I, I have about six moves, and I promise you I'm going to spend just a few moments with each move. But it says to us, when the fellowship of our relationship with God is important to us, then we could be described in several ways. Number one, we could be described as individuals whose character is well-rounded and grounded. When you think about character being well-rounded and grounded, you have to consider these three words, walk, Work and word. Notice what the psalmist says. He who are they who. These are individuals. Who walks blamelessly. Who walks blamelessly. Well what does it mean. To walk blamelessly. But the writer here is speaking of integrity. He is actually talking about the child of God, the people of God, are to be seen as a one-way street. And that is we're always going in the same direction. And that is we are not individuals who change on God. One minute we want God, the next minute we don't have time for God. One moment we are sold out concerning the things of God, the next minute is all about our agenda. He's talking about those who walk with integrity. That's a challenge, isn't it? That's why scientists are so impressed with the gecko. You've seen it. It's lime green. 
It's a lizard. It has specks of either red or orange. I'm colorblind, so it's red or orange. And this particular lizard can stick to any surface. Scientists are, they are baffled by this phenomenal giftedness even of this particular creature. This particular creature can, can stick in any surface, regardless if it's a dirty surface, the gecko can, a gecko, from a dirty surface, there is no dirt attached to the feet of the gecko. That gecko can be in an unclean environment. And yet when that gecko is removed from that environment, the dirt that was in the environment is not attached to his feet. As God's people, you and I ought to be his people no matter the environment. And I need to tell you, God has called us to go to some dirty places. But the place doesn't change us. We change the place. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We make contact without being contaminated. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so God is saying to you, unclean, questionable, side-eyed, it makes no difference. Whenever people see you, you ought to be the same same person wipe your feet off some of us need to wipe our feet off I know I know because God has called us to go in some questionable locations and those who are bathed in Christ have no idea why we go into the hedges and why we go into the highways and they are questioning our rendezvous but we know where God has called us to go and we know what he's called us to do so give him something to talk about. Walks blamelessly, walks with integrity. But then now he goes from walking. He's talking about works now. Works of righteousness. Who walks blamelessly and does what is right. And, and here's where we have to understand syntax and uh, words Original use and how words evolve over a period of time. James helps us with what the psalmist is talking about here. In fact, he, James, the brother of Jesus, he helps us concerning this deep discussion about the relation of faith and work. He says to us in that particular letter, James chapter 2. He, he says, he said, what, is, what good is it, my sister or my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. All day about our faith. But when it comes to our Works, quiet as the basement in a funeral home. We, we, our works, we have nothing to say concerning our works. And the opposite of that is also true. Some of us will work until we go together. So here's talking about those whose character is well grounded and rounded. It speaks of walk of integrity. It also speaks of uh, works of righteousness, but then also speaks truth in their heart. And, and, and now what he's talking about, when it comes to God's people, we want to be known as those who keep it real. Keep it 100. 
Straight, no chaser. It, it, we, we the real deal. We tell it like it is. We don't use flowery language, colorful language. No, we tell it like it is. We'll tell you what you want to hear, and we'll tell you what you need to hear. If you don't want to hear the truth, don't ask a child of God. And that's what he is talking about here. Those, he says, who speak truth. We speak truth to power. We speak the truth because Jesus says the truth will make you free. If I don't tell the truth, I can't sleep at night. But if I tell the truth, God will rock a bye, baby, in the treetop. When the God puts you to sleep. When you stand up for him. Well, that's one characteristic. I told you, I'm just, I'm going I'm to I'm just say a little bit about each one of them. Stay with me. If you see anybody nodding, you know, you know how we do at the outlet. Elbow to the rib cage. Okay. See, he, and again, these are barriers here. We don't want anything or anyone to separate us from the fellowship of our relationship. With God, the relationship is intact. Once save, always save. <clears throat> but it is the fellowship that you and I can lose if we don't guard it. Well, he talks about character that is well grounded and rounded. But then this second one, it reminds me of, it's still one of my favorite shows in Living Color. How many of y'all remember? Yeah, I'll tell you. And, and my girl, put my girl, that was my girl right there, but he, that, that was my girl. And, and you remember, and remember, you, you did not talk about Miss Jenkins. But guess who did? Benita did. And, and that is people who commit verbal homicide. There, there are always talking negatively about others. There are always blaming others. Think is wrong is somebody else's fault. <laughs> Tony Evan, he says when his children were small, they would love to go to the livestock shows in Fort Worth, Texas. Livestock, this farm animals, okay? I can see through those masks, some of y'all was like, a livestock, and no, livestock. And his children would love to go see these animals. But, but he didn't because of the smell. Mm. And they would get there, and his kids would be happy, bouncing around. Let's go see this and go see this. And I mean, he'd be there 10 or 15 minutes, and the smell, he just couldn't take it. He'd be ready to go. That way from the animals. But he said, I could still smell the animals. He got in the car, and windows were up, but they could still smell. They'd be halfway home, and the smell was still there, pulled in the driveway, he said, and, and, and there was the smell. He said, how is it that the smell of Fort Worth has made its way to Dallas? And then he looked down at his shoes. <laughs> and while he was blaming everybody else for the smell, the smell was his fault. Come here, somebody. If you're always blaming your life, blaming the circumstances of life, talking about how everybody is doing something wrong, ain't nobody doing right, you can always pick out what's finding glasses and know that while you're talking about a stick in somebody else's eye, there's a stick in your own eye. 
So here the move is. Those who want to guard their fellowship with God, they are quick to bite their tongue before they criticize others. Listen to what he says. Who does not slander with his tongue. Now notice, notice what the Bible has to say about us from God concerning us. We're the apple of his eye. That's built, that God is building us up. We are more than conquerors. That's building us up. God tells us he has plans for us. That's building us up. So how is it that our father speaks words of construction? He builds us up and we speak words of destruction. There's an inaccuracy there. And so if you are that type of person, and you got to admit it, some people love to gossip. They, they, they love to talk about other people. They, they, they love to see people fail. They are jealous of the success of others. They want people to fail. And you can ask them any time of the day and they will be able to tell you what is wrong. They will be able to tell you who is wrong and they will never be able to tell you what is right. I just hope and pray that you are not such because what goes around comes around. Well, well, those are two characteristics, characters well-rounded and grounded. We bite our tongue before criticizing others. But then there is something else here. And, and this it, is somewhat close to what I just said, but it's not identical, and that is these individuals, they, they, they have no ill will towards anybody. Think about that. It, it, it is something, and you got to know this, just because a lot of people don't like you, you don't have to not like a lot of people. You, you, you don't have to do that. Because I'm going to tell you something. Not liking people will rob you of rest. Not caring for people will suck on your joy. And, and so make sure that, yes, you are aware who don't care for you. But there's not one individual that people can name. He says here, who does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. Now, I want us to look at ourselves closely. How do we treat our neighbors? Are we kind to our neighbors? Do we think we are better than people? And, and just for a moment, I need you to look beyond your next door neighbor in terms of your house. I want you to get in the word because your neighbor is anybody that you pass or anyone that passes you. Do you ever have to deal with a look at him in your spirit? It says you're no ill will towards anyone. No one we want to see. You and I got to deal with that. No ill will towards our neighbor. But then it goes on to say no reproach against our friends. How do you treat a friend that mistreated you? How do you, how do you speak of a friend you trusted but didn't know you couldn't trust them until you trusted them? And do you go around warning people? Now, I'm going to tell you something. You ain't got to listen to me, but let me tell you what that dog did to me. 
You do your own thing now, but I'm just saying. Be careful now. He's speaking, not having any ill will towards anyone. And you and I got to know, as long as we can see the snake, that's good enough. And we, have to wear, we don't have to carry that snake thing around where you handle the snake. Now you just see a snake, and a snake is a snake all the time. And thank God you see the snake. But don't speak ill of a snake. A snake is a snake, and it ain't the snake's fault. Listen, it's a, it's a whole lot of low-down, dirty people, I'm going to tell you. It, it's, some people who, it's some people who live, who live to see you fail. It's some people who live to destroy you. It's some people who don't want anything good to happen to you. And thank God he's pointed them out for you. And thank God he protected you until he showed you exactly who they were. And so, so these are the types of individuals who are in fellowship with God. And, and notice everything that the psalmist is giving us lines up with Jesus. Don't you want to be like Jesus? Well, let me give you another one because I'm running out of time. Now, now, and here, who now? Character that is well-rounded and grounded. We are the same all the time. We are concerned about uh, what we do, how we do it. We are concerned. Our goal is not perfection, it is faithfulness. That is our goal. But then he moves to, you know, what we do with these tongues. You got to bite your tongue. And let me tell you something. You know what I've learned? You know, I've learned, and I'm still learning. And, and if you don't think you are, I'm going to say for you, you, you is too. <laughs> you and I need to learn the discipline of being silent when you have a lot to say. When they running you down, hum or something. Learn the art of being disciplined when you have a whole lot to say. But then no ill will towards others. And then he goes to this, this fourth, and he's talking about um, having, the, having the correct perspective of the right type of person. He says here, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But who honors those who fear the Lord. Two types of individuals. You know, there, there is nothing worse about not having a role model is having the wrong role model. And there's a generation who value clothes, cash, and cars more than dignity, honor, and respect. And, and that generation in that first group, that's, that's, that's who and what they live for. They, they, they go for, has, has nothing to do with how you live, nothing to do with how you treat people, but as long as you got cash, cars, and clothes, they, 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 they build their lives around that type of person. That's one generation. But then there's another generation who really 
are not concerned about cash cars. And what? Make sure you're listening. <laughs> and about fathers who provide for their families. They're impressed with mothers who do ten things at one time and manage the whole house. They're amazed with people who, who will sacrifice, who live a life of sacrifice. They're always putting others before themselves. And then you and I have to answer that question, which generation are we a part of? He says now, those whose eyes a vile person is despised. That is, you don't hate the individual. You don't care for what they do. And, and you're not molding your life after them. No, you're looking at somebody else who may not have the largest house, but they got a home. I wish you were listening to me. They may not have the square footage, but there's peace in that house. There's joy in that house. There's hope in that house. The presence of God is in that house. You love to go to that house. And they don't have to watch their back. Because everything they have, it has come from the generosity of God and the sweat of their brow. Well, that's, let, me, let me move on. He said, they honor, he says. But who, who honors those who fear the Lord? I think I got two more. But then he goes on, then next he says, he says, now, if you're going to maintain this fellowship, you know, there's certain things you're going to look out for and, and make your priority. And, and the next, he says, has to do with doing your very best to uh, keep your word no matter the circumstances. Listen to what he says. Who swears to his own hurt and does not change. And here, what, what, what the psalmist is talking about, he said, be careful not only with what you say, but how you say it. Because you might have to eat your own words. And, and Jesus was talking about, you don't have to. He said, watch people who got to do extra stuff when they said, yeah, I'm going to do it. Man, I swear on Big Mama Gray. I ain't lying, man. I'm telling you, listen, man, listen. Listen. Hope, hope to God, hope to die. Listen, I ain't playing, man. Man, listen, listen. Would I lie to you? Come on now. You got to be careful with them kind of people. And in essence, all he is saying is, as, as God's people now, it is our heart's desire to do exactly what we said we would do. It's our heart's desire. Let our yea be our yea, our nay be our nay. That, um, Wesley Kelsley, Kerry Wesley, um, died a couple of years ago, and he, um, very preacher, uh, scholar, uh, wrote many books, and um, on one occasion, uh, his staff member, in fact, they were writing these notes to the uh, Matthew commentary. And, and they said, Pastor, do you promise to have the portion uh, to, the, to the publishers uh, uh, by such and such date so, so we can stay on track? And, 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 and he started to say, done. But, but then it dawned on him what the Bible says. And so he said, because he wanted to keep his word, so he said, if the Lord wills, I'll do it. Yeah. Unbeknownst to him, two days later, he had multiple heart attacks, major surgery. And, of course, you know that pushed the work. They couldn't complete the work on time. 
And what the writer here is saying is, be careful how you respond with your words. That is to say, talking about what all we are going to do, talking about what we are not going to do. He says, be careful with that. He says, be the type of person that it is your heart's desire to keep your word no matter the circumstances. And he says, sometimes circumstances will come your way. And because they have changed, sometimes your word will change. But don't you change your word. Sometimes circumstances have to change your word. Let me move to this, I think it's the next to the last one. And, and that is, um, he's talking about those who, who, who have the right uh, perspective of money. And that is, money is a, a servant, not a master. This is what he said. Who, he says, who does not put out his money at interest. And does not uh, take a bribe against uh, the innocent. Okay. And, and, and there are some people who value money over people. And now he, he makes this point. Who does not put out his money and interest. And, and here we, we, we understand the context. And that is uh, under the law. Uh, an Israelite uh, would, could, would lend money to a fellow Jew, but they would not charge interest. They would, however, lend money out to a Gentile, and, and it was acceptable for them to charge them interest. Now, if, if, they, if they did business that way when they were under the law, and when you look at that, we are under grace then how much more ought you and I be known for how we handle people and money and handle money and people? That is, that is, people can't buy us. Nobody can have us in their back pocket. Nobody. And we don't try to buy our way out of stuff. We don't try to go to the front of the line because, you know, we got to, you know, we got to live some, some. We, we don't do that. And that is because we are concerned about how we deal with money and how we deal with people who do not have money and how we deal with people who have more money than we do. There are a lot of suckers. For money. And we've all have met them. We, we all know them. It's always about money, 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 money. But the writer here provides for us a description of those whose priority is fellowship with God and he has given us a list of such persons and he says in that last line he or whoever does these things shall never be moved <laughs> think about it for the moment how over the last few years I mean we, we just thought that there were certain things about our world, certain things in our society that would always be in place. They would never be moved. But over the last few years, we have seen major corporations, doors shut. I mean, whoever thought Sears, there would never be a Sears. Sears and Roebuck is what Big Mama called it. But over a period of time, that which we thought would always be is no longer. And then when you consider pre-9-11, 
the skyscrape, the skyline even, of New York City. We never would have imagined that a 9-11 would change all of that. And then when you consider the, the, the Gulf Coastal communities, New Orleans, Mississippi, Alabama, and how those, those coastal communities were, were serene. I mean, they were, 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 were picture perfect, but Katrina came through there and changed the way all of those communities look today. These are all things that we never thought would move, would never change. And then when all of that was taking place, there were those who would even ask the faithful, those of us who call ourselves sons and daughters of God. They raised question, is there anything that you can hold on to that will not fall apart? When they considered everything around them that had fallen apart or had shifted or moved, they wanted to know what was our position on anything that we call immovable. And our answer to their question about is there anything that you can hold on to that won't move? And our answer is yes. Because the word of God the word of God speaks to us. The apostle Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness, shall danger, shall the sword, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Have I got a witness here? And Paul, he, he ends, he ends this doxology by saying, for I am sure. That's a strong word. I am confident. That is, you can wake me up at 2 a.m. in the morning and I'll have the same response. When life is good, I'll have the same response. When life is bad, I'll have the same response. Paul said, for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us. Have I got a witness? Separate us. Move us. Pull us apart from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Have I got a witness here? I thank God. That there's nothing that can separate God from us. Have I got a witness? I wish I could say, I've never let go of him. But I cannot say that. I have let go of him. But my testimony is, he's never let go of me. Have I got a witness? It's not about my faith. It's not about your faith. It's not about your faith in God. But it's about the God of your faith. Have I got a witness? I thank God that in spite of everything moving, everything shifting, everything separating, we're still here. Have I got a witness? I don't know who I'm talking to. But if you're worshiping today, let me give you this word. In times like these, have I got a witness? 
you need you need an anchor have I got a witness in time like these you need you need a rock have I got a witness be sure be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock have I got a witness oh praise his name this rock this rock is Jesus have I got a witness he is the only rock so be sure be very 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 sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock have I got a witness I thank God that he'll never he'll never leave us have I got a witness I thank God when we turn on him he's always always there I thank God when we turn our back on him he moves in our direction have I got a witness he promised never 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 to leave us alone have I got a witness I thank God that I finally got it I thank God that I finally understand it that without him I can do nothing without him I will surely fail have I got a witness somebody said without God I could do nothing without him I will surely fail without him my life would be so rugged like a ship without a sail have I got a witness I think I finally got it that's why I'm gonna keep my hand in the master's hand that's why I'm gonna walk with him that's why I'm gonna talk with him that's why I'm gonna keep my eyes I'm gonna keep my eyes come with me I'm gonna keep my eyes on it trouble on every hand keep my eyes on it. walking by myself keep my eyes on it don't know which way to turn keep my eyes I'm gonna keep my eyes I'm gonna keep my eyes keep my eyes on him You can't lose the relationship. But you can fall out of fellowship. Other things can become our priority. Other people. Life. Circumstances in life can be so devastating and destructive they turn us away from God we have sayings if God was so good why did he allow this to happen to me and we become estranged from God we back away our commitment our passion our faithfulness is because we have allowed a barrier we've allowed a wall 
We've allowed something to interfere with the fellowship. Now, there's nothing you can do to get it back, but he'll give it back. I wish you would listen to me today. Yeah, you, there's nothing you can do. But he'll give it back to you. He will restore the joy of your soul. He, 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 will, light, he will relight the fire. He'll, he'll pull you in close. <laughs> oh, I got some witnesses in here. He, he'll, he'll pull you in close. He'll pull you. <laughs> he'll pull you in close. And we'll remind you. <laughs> You're his son. You're his daughter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? When you walk away from him, <laughs> he's walking with you. It, it's never a long walk back to him. It's never a long walk. But it's always a big first step. It's, a, it's just a big first step. It's not a long walk. It's just a big first step. If, if, if you have ever forsaken God, but he restored the fellowship, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You ever turned away from him, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He, he never left you alone. He didn't stop blessing you. He was still fighting your battles. He was still for you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so today. Come on, let's bless them today. The fellowship of the saints, the fellowship, the communion that we have with our God. He's a great God. He's a good God. You're worshiping today, you're a part of this service, and you've yet to declare God as your God. But you want to do it today. We pray that you will. If you're searching for a place to call your church, you believe this is a great place to be, we would love to have you if you want to be a member of this church. We just thank God for the fellowship. We just thank God for the communion. We just thank God for the connection we have with him and the connection he has with us. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Ushers.